Okay, this is the second part of a project to make a t-shirt piece of art for, uh, or with this fish. And the fish is uh, built off of a little pencil sketch on a notepad. In the first portion of this project, we tra traced out the fish. So here we have the vector drawings. Right now, I think, before I get too far along, my vector shapes on this fin are not that great. So I'm going to select my tool, my track select tool, turn off the or unlock the layers. And you can see now that, like on this one, the curve is laying down flat, the control handle. If the angle coming in and the angle going out of a curve are about equal, it makes a nice smooth curve. So we want to make nice smooth curves. So in this case, these are a little bit short, so it kind of bunches up as it goes through the middle of that curve. Possibly same with this one. I should have a little bit more tension here. This one here laying flat there, equalize the path through, gets nice and smooth. So that's uh, a bit of an improvement. This one should pull down here. Okay, so that that looks a lot better. Okay, so I, I talked boldly about making a turquoise green kind of body, pink fins and mouth, and a black eye. So before I just start picking colors for the fills on this, I think what I want to do is um, I want to make sure that I have spot colors because when this is printed on the at the silk screen shop they're going to have uh, single mixed colors, spot colors and they won't know what to do with uh, RGB colors or CMYK colors. They have to have a dedicated named color. So I'm going to go to the named color library, the color books that are the pan that have the Pantone guide colors in them. So I'm going to go to color guide and at the bottom of color guide you'll see this little box here that says limits color group to colors in a swatch library. So I can pick out out of all of these fabulous libraries I can go into color books and get the Pantone solid coated. That's going to give me all these dedicated Pantone colors. Now those aren't the colors I want so a real handy trick is, okay, I'm going to do a body color that's sort of a turquoisey, bluish green. How about this one out of the standard swatches? Well, that automatically gives me, under the little pointer, a Pantone spot color that's as close as it thinks the equivalent will be. So I'll drag it over here, and there we have Pantone 3272C. All right, I think I want a, kind of a reddish, pinkish fin color. Uh, how about this one here? This is kind of in the pink-orange range. Select that, and once again here it shows up. I might even jump over to this one here. I think maybe that's more pinkish. I like that one. So right now, I'm kind of arbitrarily picking colors, but I'm picking them out of a Pantone library so I can just give the printer a Pantone color and they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And I will make the eyeball black so that won't be a problem. This will be black. So now we have our working colors to start with. So go here to the shapes and I'm going to select the first shape that's going to be my fish color. Select this one here. That's going to be my fin color. Once again, there we go. Select the fin color. Get in here to the mouth. Same color. And you might be wondering about the eyeball. Well, we want to see the whites of their eyes. So we're going to make a 
color underneath this whole thing called a uh, undercolor, a base color, a printing white color, uh, various names for it. It's a backup color that goes under this fish so that if it's printed on a black t-shirt, all of my colors still come out nice and bright because the, they aren't uh, pulled down by the, the black. So you put a white backing color underneath your colors quite frequently in t-shirt business. So um, that will come through here. The, the white that I'm going to build later will be the white of my eyeball. So here we have all the basic parts. And of course they overlap and they're kind of getting in the way. So a really handy thing to do here is suppose I use my Pathfinder tool and I just select everything. I'm a big fan of just dragging marquees around chunks of pieces because uh, with the main selector tool as long as you get any part of a shape the whole shape is selected. Okay so here's our Pathfinder, here's our divide tool that will divide all of these parts up into in individual pieces and I'm going to I'll get a lot of parts out of this. So it's just divided it it tends to group these, so I'm going to ungroup those. And now I have these extra parts here. Now before I do anything else, I'm looking forward to the point where I have to build what they call a trap. That means that I want to put some of this color under this color, or I want to put some of this color under that color, and uh, I do that by using this dividing line here, putting a stroke on it, and letting it be the, the little overlapping trap color that uh, traps one color underneath another one. So before I do anything rash, I'm going to select this because this contains that interface that would be really handy for making a trap. And also this part here contains that interface, and this part right here contains that. And so if those were all copied, and supposing I had a brand new layer up here at the top and I call that traps. And so in the traps layer if I do a paste in place, all my pieces will stay right where they are So those are the parts I'm going to use to trap with. And I can just turn them off, lock them off just for your safekeeping, and then go back here, select this fish body, shift select on that part. I can unite it. It picked up the, the orange color, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to select now this piece. I have the body selected to another Unite. I'm going to select this piece, the bottom of the tongue, do another Unite with the body of the fish, and I've got those parts. And then since that's selected, I'll change it back to body of fish color. Uh, this one here, also the bottom of the eyeball needs to be united with the fish color. That will probably turn the body black, but we'll go for it. Oops, okay, there we are. All right, so we have that. Now, this shape in here is going to be a hole cut out of the body of the fish to make the white of the eyeball. So if I select that and this one, with any luck, I'll go over here to Compound Path, say Make a Compound Path, and that didn't work. Okay, undo that. I might be able to use the... Here it is. Well, sometimes it just wants to be told that it is very definitely the front object. And so I'll do that. Go to the remove minus front. There we go. Sometimes it takes several different approaches to make some of these vector operations work. 
Okay, so we have these parts ready. Um, I did lose my my fish here, or my, my fin. Luckily, in that madness for combining things, um, I do have this. So if I copy that, turn that off, go back to the scene of the crime, catch up here, I uh, will paste this in front. There's that part. If I select that plus this one and unite those, then I should have a shape there. Now I'm not sure if that's um, I might be having a problem with that if there's no hole cut underneath that. So here's this path here, and yes, the, I need a hole underneath this. <coughs> so select that, select that, do the divide, and then just for good measure, I'll ungroup that, select that, select that. Unite them. So now I've got a hole cut out there. So now when I go to make my pieces for a silk screen, um, I have all the raw materials to go with here. Uh, one final gesture, I will turn off all of the strokes for this because I don't need to see those. So that isn't part of the design. So here we have the basic fish. And it's ready to go. The next step is to work with our traps and our overprints and build a undercolor backing layer for this to um, make it printable. <coughs>